Chase's division of the Travis County Police Department. Over 1,300 pieces of evidence were collected from the crime scene. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. For those that don't know, a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie was released on Netflix this past weekend. Now, I've already done a review and I talked about the reasons why I believe that it is a creative failure. Mainly because it doesn't offer much in the way of recapturing the tone of the original. Which is what I thought a legacy sequel was supposed to do. That makes sense. Apparently, there are a lot of people who are now taking issue with other people being critical of this film. Many of them believe that people should just be happy that we have a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. They simply believe that the film is being judged too harshly. This, my friends, is how you know that true film criticism is actually dying. When the only people who are actually being honest about the quality of a film are portrayed as villains. Because God forbid you have standards and you want better for a franchise. Fuck me, right? I guess what I should be doing is filling YouTube with more toxic positivity and just telling everyone what they want to hear. Like we don't have enough channels on YouTube doing that already. Maybe this is why a lot of people don't take the horror genre seriously. Because even a lot of the so-called fans of horror can't look at anything objectively and simply refuse to demand better. Sorry to break it to you, but I'm just built different. I'm not here to tell you exactly what you want to hear. I am here to deliver a dose of reality in a world full of lies. And that starts by calling out shit when I see it. But damn right, that's the only way I work, Cap. Some horror fans might be satisfied with generic slasher content. Sometimes I am as well, but in this particular case, I am not. Because my goal is to push the conversation in a different direction. I would love for horror to be returned to its former creative glory. Once again, you have to speak up if you care about something, because apparently, no one else will. But in the interest of being constructive today, I thought I would try something new. <laughs> Whoopie fucking do. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. I thought to myself, what would I do if I had the opportunity to make a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel? Well, my initial answer to that is I wouldn't make a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel because I don't believe that the movie requires a sequel. But sequels do happen, and imagine this. You have unlimited resources, and the best thing that they could come up with is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. It's actually kind of sad. Why do you cry? So my goal today is to show that myself and probably even people in the comment section of this very video could come up with a better story than the one that we got. Because there are a lot of other people who are not satisfied with mediocrity. If the idea is in fact to restore Texas Chainsaw Massacre to its roots, then this is how I would do it. Now the first thing I thought of when I sat down to think about what my Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie would look like is what would Toby Hooper do if he had a bigger budget and was given free reign to make a sequel? Now of course he did make a sequel already and in the interest of showing that film some respect, my idea will borrow and pay homage to Toby Hooper's sequel in some way. Because that's how you show respect, by not completely ignoring what came before. My film would pick up immediately where the original left off, so it would be set in 1974, at least initially. And at the start of the film, we would have lone survivor Sally being interviewed by police about what happened to her. Simultaneously, while she's revealing all the grisly details, we would see local police raiding the Sawyer farm in an effort to catch this homicidal maniac known as Leatherface. Now, of course, their efforts would fail and Leatherface would escape, possibly through some underground tunnel under the house or something like that. And thus, a manhunt would ensue for the first portion of this film. I would in fact have a small local sheriff character, similar to what is in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. However, I would make him a bit less over the top, and a little more hard-nosed and down to business. And if we were shooting for the stars in a perfect situation, I could even see someone like Matthew McConaughey playing that role, which his very existence in the movie would be yet another connection to past sequels. And this sheriff takes a very direct approach to finding Leatherface. I'm talking going door to door and asking people questions. Much to his surprise, however, he's met with resistance from locals. Because they would all share a similar resentment that the Sawyer family had for modern society. 
I can imagine that many people lost something in this area due to their businesses becoming obsolete. Now they might not have gone crazy and started eating people necessarily, but there is an economic conversation to be had with the world established by Toby Hooper in the first movie. So basically there's this built up angst in the community and this inadvertently and directly in some ways forms a protective bubble over Leatherface and the authorities can't track him down. And at some point I actually really like the idea of Leatherface being taken in by someone. Someone who shows him a bit of compassion and doesn't really realize exactly what he did, or at least the extent of it. I can imagine that this person has fallen on misfortune. They've maybe lost someone close to them recently, and they're up there in age. And this person takes Leatherface in like maybe no one ever has before. Of course, this would eventually lead to the more horrific parts of this movie, and you would have Leatherface maybe killing drifters or killing trespassers who come onto this new farm. At some point, I could even see Leatherface feeding this person that he lives with human flesh maybe without that person even realizing what they're eating. Limited resources will make you not ask a lot of questions and I think this could make for a very dark moment in the movie. Once Leatherface is firmly in hiding I would have some time pass. It just wouldn't be 70 years and he wouldn't be an old man. Maybe about five years and this would put us around 1979. Local PD never really find the killer and the case kind of goes cold. This leads to a newly formed department in the FBI eventually looking into the case. One that involves studying criminal psychology, similar to the Netflix show Mindhunter, if anyone's ever seen that. That show is about the origins of the thought process behind the concept of serial killers, and how the FBI goes about catching them. This all happened in the late 1970s, which would line up perfectly with my storyline and law enforcement now trying to catch Leatherface. And also it makes Leatherface a bit more of a big deal. So we would have this subplot that kind of plays off the ideas presented in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Only this time it's about a new form of law enforcement basically making the old form of law enforcement obsolete. So a hunt for Leatherface recommences and you have these dueling ideologies about how to proceed. You would have the local sheriff who is very direct and acts as the Captain Ahab to Leatherface's Moby Dick. And then you would have a younger FBI agent type character who does things a bit more methodical. And maybe the case is even reopened when new bodies start to show up because we know Leatherface can't stop killing. At least not in this world. And that would be the general body of the movie. A manhunt movie, maybe with shades of a buddy cop movie, mixed with all the traditional horror elements. I don't quite have it all laid out yet, but the conclusion would come with law enforcement closing in on Leatherface in his new homestead. And I don't know why, but I picture it ending in a similar fashion to the classic Frankenstein story. With the house ablaze and maybe even Leatherface's fate unknown by the end of the film. So that's the story in a nutshell. As for the tone of the film, I'm honestly looking to bring some of that Silence of the Lambs energy to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And what I mean by that is I want this film to be taken seriously, not just like another generic slasher movie, even though it will still have slasher elements to it. It could even be a character study to some degree. Now you don't have to go in deep and explain who Leatherface is, but you will have a little bit of that given the emphasis on the psychology of killers. We've never really had one of our iconic slashers treated with this level of respect. I think it would be interesting to take a character like Leatherface and actually make him into a bigger deal. Whenever I watch the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I feel like I need a tetanus shot afterwards, and I would definitely try to recreate the down and dirty, low budget feel of the original. Even if I have a bigger budget, I would have less emphasis on things like blood and gore, and it would be more about what you don't see that would frighten people. Let the audience fill in the blanks a little bit more for the horror scenes. I think that would be a better way to go. Have these horrific horror moments in broad daylight, just like the original, and of course all set against these beautiful backdrops of this Texas landscape. Use the environment, use the atmosphere to increase the quality of the film. Return the franchise to its roots. Seek to disturb people rather than just gross them out. I also like the idea of having a vintage video recording segment of the movie, similar to how Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 starts. I would have someone basically going over the grisly crime scene from the original movie. It would give the director or whoever's in charge the opportunity to recreate the after
aftermath of the original movie. This could happen early in the film and could serve as a reintroduction for the audience as well, and getting them reacclimated to the events of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that's the general idea I have for a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel that would attempt to recapture the tone of the original. Does this sound better or worse than the movie that we got? Let me know in the comments down below. And let me know some of your ideas for possible Texas Chainsaw Massacre films as well. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Shut up.